Hi, welcome to Straight Out of Sixth Grade News. Today we have some great segments, including a tribute to mothers and a little more information on track. Hope you enjoy. Now on, on the track. track. Hi, and welcome to our segment about the Yorktown Middle School track team. Now let's talk about the events. So. Some of the events, just to name a few, are the 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter, 800 meter, 1600 meter, 3200 meter, and all of those have, I'm pretty sure, a relay counterpart besides the 100 meter. Wow. I know, right? And you know what's shocking to me, Caden? They have no solo wins. No, I was just going to say there's 115 people on the track team, but that works too. So, um, now that I'm depressed and everything, <laughs> because I have no solo wins, <laughs> let's talk about some of the more field events. We have uh, shot put, discus, where you throw a first beat, like, not like that, not like that, terrible form, trust me. Um, shot put, where you throw a giant heavy metal ball that I'm terrible at, if, if you can tell by my noodles. And then, we got, <laughs> and then we got a long jump, where you have to have mad hops, and you got to go to point A, you got to run from point A, to point B, then you gotta hop off of point B as far as you can. This is about how far I make it. Um, also, we have high jump, which is terrible for short people. Don't even say anything about that, it's okay. Okay, why don't you go ahead and tell the people? By people, I mean every sixth grader in this building <coughs> that is going to watch me embarrass myself on <coughs> YouTube over and over again. <laughs> why don't you tell them? How is a 100 meter dash run ran? So a 100 meter dash is run. ran by a, b a bunch of people like Cole, only a little bit, um, that Uncalled is. for. <laughs> it's uncalled for. Just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> that can sprint faster than me because their legs are longer and are taller is what Kane's trying to get at. Um, 400 meter, full lap around the track. 200 meter, half a lap around the track. You gotta be super speedy squicks. Squicks. Quicks. Um, Less squicks. Then, um, and then the 800 meter, two laps around the track. 1600 meter, it's one mile, four laps around the track. And then obviously the 3200 meter that I'm in no way going to run because <coughs> it is eight laps around the track. It's two hours. And that is all we have. That's all the time we have today. Um, I'm signing off. Um, Kane is half blind because he doesn't have the glasses on. Sam, please edit this out. Thank you. That was a great segment about track. Now on to women's rights. gathering for the women's rights movement took place on July 19th through 20th, 1848 in Seneca Falls, New York. The organizers of the event were Elizabeth Caddy, State, and Luther Shamont. Around 100 people showed up for the event and roughly two-thirds of them were women. The struggle began to proceed onwards. At first, women addressed things that limited their rights, such as family responsibilities. Staten and Susan B. Anthony met and forged a lifetime alliance as women's rights activists. During the 1880s, the women's rights activists struggled to gain momentum. The turning point came in the late 1880s and early 1890s when the nation experienced a surge of volunteers among middle class women, activists in progressive causes, members of women's clubs and professional societies. By 1890, more supporters were joining the cause. Women from organizations such as Women's Trade Union League and the Women's Christian Temperance Union and the National Consumers League. Even though they made good progress, they still faced violence, discrimination, and institutional barriers. The 19th Amendment was addressed to the U.S. Constitution in 1920. This amendment granted women the right to vote. So in conclusion, this movement overall purpose was for women to have the same rights as men and to be treated like equals. Thanks for watching. Bye. Out of this world. Hope you enjoy learning more about space. The sun. <laughs> it's pretty cool. What would happen if it went supernova? That's pretty dark to think about. Yeah. Anyway, what would really happen if the sun, well, died? I mean, thousands of people dying. Sounds great. Hey, but it's interesting to think about. I mean, sure, I guess, but what does supernova even mean? You're supposed to be a space expert. 
Supernova, a star that suddenly increases greatly in bright brightness because of a catastrophic explosion that ejects most of its mass. See, now that wasn't hard, was it? We have to get back to the video. Oh, yeah. Anyway, what would really happen if the sun, well, died? I mean, thousands of people died. We already talked about this! We have to get back to the video. First thing that would happen would, well, it couldn't happen. What do you mean? In order for any star to go supernova, it must have a mass greater than eight solar masses. The sun is not nearly close enough to that. It would totally defy the law of physics. But let's say the sun does defy the law of physics. Well, let me see what a supernova is again. I'm listening. So a giant star explodes with passion and kills everything around it like a giant ball of fury. If our sun exploded like that, lots of radiation would be released. That can't be good for ozone, would it? No, it would not. So what would happen if our ozone layer died? The gamma rays laser everything they can in sight, killing us all. That isn't good. What's a gamma ray, you ask? Didn't ask. A gamma ray is a thing that supernovas release. That's just one reason supernovas are so dangerous. How far is the sun from Earth anyway? Why? Well, it's pretty far away, so it couldn't hurt as much, right? Well, if a star 30 light years away had a supernova, it could cause mass extinctions here on Earth. The sun is farther. The sun is 8.3 light minutes away. We're all gonna die. But the loss of our ozone would be the least of our worries. What else could possibly happen other than solar lasers killing us all? People experiencing daytime would not have it very well. What would happen to them? The surface would boil away. <sighs> That's pretty awful. But people on the nighttime side would not have it very good either. Let me guess. They would all die. Our Earth would get to 15 times hotter than the surface of the sun. How did you know I was going to say that? I actually read my script for once. Now anyway, it would take a few days for the Earth to vaporize. <laughs> In this segment, we're going to be talking about Friday the 13th. We're going to find out why Friday the 13th is such bad luck and what the superstition is. We're also going to be talking about bad things that have happened to people on Friday the 13th. <laughs> Today is Friday the 13th. We all know that means bad luck. The superstition surrounding the date is thought to originate with the Last Supper attended by 13 people on Jesus Christ and his 12 disciples on Monday, Thursday, the night before his crucifixion by Roman soldiers on Monday Friday. The number 13 is therefore associated with Judas Iscariot, Christ's betrayer, and is regarded in, as imperfect compared with 12, which represents the number of months in the year. I was born on Friday the 13th. A British cartoon man was struck by lightning on Friday the 13th at 1313. 1313 is 113 in military time. While getting struck by lightning is definitely horrible, this incident ended up being a miracle. According to the Daily Mail, the unnamed teenager was struck by lightning while at Mayor's Show in England and was treated only for burns on his shoulder. The hospital stated he was expected to make a full recovery. On July 13, 1951, the state of Kansas was hit over with 25 inches of rain. The cities of Manhattan, Lawrence, and Topeka were most affected, and over two, two million acres of land were damaged by floods. The storm also affected oil tanks, some of which caught on fire and exploded. There were passengers that were stuck on trains for four days, and at its highest, the floating exceeded previous records by 49 feet. That was terrifying! Now we're going to pay tribute to our moms. We love you, Mom!
today we'll be talking about National Mom's Day. Not Mother's Day, Mom's Day, which is on April 22nd. For National Mom's Day, I'm going to tell you guys what I think mother means, and I'm going to tell you the Urban Dictionary definition. I think mother means the person that gives birth to you and loves you no matter what happens. And Urban Dictionary says, the woman who loves you unconditionally from birth, the one who puts her kids before herself, and the one who can always, you can always count on of everyone else. Hi, I'm Haley, and today we're going to be interviewing teachers about what they think about their mom and why they love them so much. But I'll also be surprising our mothers with flowers to show how much we appreciate them. Why do you love your mom? I think everybody loves their mom. That's the first person you make a connection with. Your mother carried you for nine months. And um, I, my mother is no longer living, um, but she was a great person and she did anything that a mother could do for me. She was a very kind person. She was kind to everybody. That's great. What kind of things did your mom do for you? Uh, she provided me with an education, um, with a home to live in, with clothes to wear, food to eat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. And what does it feel like to be a mom? Oh, that's the best thing. But what's even better than being a mom is being a grandma. <laughs> so you have a long time to wait and then you, one day you'll figure that out you but raise it, your kid and spoil theirs that is exactly right because you want to be a disciplinary person for your kids but you don't necessarily have to do that with your grandkids what about you do you have a grandmother yes is it that way with her yes see there you go thank you you're welcome why do you love your mom why do I love my mom my mom was the only person in her family to get a college education. She worked for 10 years after she got out of high school to earn money so she could go to college. She put herself through college. She raised five kids. She taught us correct grammar. She was an example for the four of us females that, uh, oh yeah, by the way, she got married at 30. So, you know, she delayed marriage like so many women are starting to do now, but she showed her daughters that you didn't have to settle down and be crazy about some guy to have some worth and that we needed to be self-sufficient and be able to provide for ourselves. But most of all, she insisted on kindness, that that was the most important thing. That's really nice. Would you say that those were the main things that she did for you? She, she cooked, she cleaned, she, uh, she worked as a school nurse for 25 years, I think it was. And, but she, and then she came home and she was a farm wife, which meant dealing with animals. And um, she provided us, I didn't go to kindergarten or nursery school or anything like that, but we kind of had our own little learning community at home before we went to public school. Um, she was just, an exceptional example of a person. She she wasn't by any means perfect, very opinionated. And I if she Yeah, but yeah, I suppose they are. But um, as far as the best lesson she taught, I think it was being independent and supremely the kindness was the most important thing. How what is it like for you to be mom? Like, what is your experience being a mom? My two daughters are terrific people. I've always heard parents and adults say, you know, my goal for my kids is for them to have more than I did. My goal was for my children to be 
better people than I was. And it's not like I'm some awful person, but you know, I, I was more interested in them being good people. And in that, to that extent, I can say I'm a mom success because my daughters are just really, really good people. But I always, you know, whenever they were worrying about competing with things, I would say, would I rather you be pretty or smart? And they've been through this a lot. They said smart. I said, would I rather you be smart or kind? Kind. Well, and I got, I got a bonanza. Each of them is pretty and smart and kind. And that's not a credit to me. It's a blessing to be the mom, to be associated with good people like that. So in spite of me, they're exceptional individuals and, and it makes me proud to know them. Well, will you reach your goal? I, yeah, I have. Thank you. Wonderful segment. Now we're going to learn about hashtag YMS is fake social media. Hi guys, okay. it's Shelia and Joshimi and Chevy. These are the 10 thousand digits of pi. It's going to be hard to listen, but I'll try. 3.141592. It's a big number. Really, it's true. Such a big number, as everyone knows, that it can go from your head to your toes. Let's listen more what the score has to say because we could be standing here till the end of the day. 3.141592653589793238462643382379 That's right, my girl always did so correct. Go up to math, tell him he just got wrecked. How many men be coming at this a little late, but it can be incredibly hard to calculate. <laughs> Eight four one nine seven one six nine three nine nine three seven five one zero oh, five eight two zero nine seven four nine four four five nine two three zero oh, seven eight one six. <gasps> 
I mean, you probably, no, all of you probably want me to die because we're not talking about the group called Pop. It's number. Yep, yep. It's a number. Yep, yep. 406286208998620834825342. Oh gosh, an ad. <laughs> You can do it. You can do it. <sighs> Five six six five nine three three four four six one one two eight four seven five six eight two three three seven eight six seven eight three one six five two seven one two one five six six five nine three three four four six one one two eight four seven five six four eight two three three seven eight six seven eight three one six five seven one two <laughs> Wait, what just happened? My work is done. Oh, darn it, I forgot everything! Now it's fun to cop being good. It's like this. Zach will trip on the ground and drop papers. He will be recording in the secret. We will see if the school students will help Zach. Let's do this. Two plus two. I know this one. I know this one. It's four. It's four. What's two plus two? Um, um, it's five. What's two plus two? Go. Thanks for watching our segment on Student Athlete Day.
watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. <laughs>